Hello and welcome back to the Saji Sharma channel. This is season two where my room is decorated slightly differently and I have grown some stubble in order to signify the change in time jump between seasons. On today's episode, my character encounters a run-of-the-mill bully, one that uses racial remarks and calls me Baljeet. There's no explanation as to why he's an asshole, the show just needed an antagonist to further my character development. Of course, I, I get angry and start to resent my culture because all of the representation we have uses negative stereotypes that and negatively affect South Asians as a whole. So time passes and instead of learning how to accept my culture, I run away from it and start dressing like that kid that called me Baljeet in order to fit in. Sperry's, Nike Elite Socks, you know, the suburban boy doesn't know how to cry get up because that's what we should do, right? Change who we are, assimilate in order to fit in, appeal to some made up high school hierarchy that then bleeds into the rest of our lives. I forgot to mention, this episode is written by Mindy Kaling. Today we're going to be discussing what I have donned, the Mindy Kaling problem. What is that problem? Well, it really boils down to Mindy using the same algorithm and pattern for all of her characters. And for some reason, they um, all have a distaste for their own culture and a taste for white men. But you see, Mindy, you're, you're missing one key audience by not celebrating your culture in your work. White women. White women love to meditate and do their yoga all they goddamn want. Oh yeah, you like crystals and have ohm tattooed on your wrist and shove my own culture in my face by always talking like you're in a library? Wow, your name is Saji? That's, that's beautiful. Your soul is beautiful. Namaste. It's namaste. Namaste. If you're going to steal from people's culture, at least pronounce things correctly. It's fine. It's fine. You know what? That's sick. Do your thing. When I was a kid, kids used to ask me why I don't have a red dot on my forehead, but whatever. Go align your chakras, Alexis. But to be fair, Mindy is able to accomplish something that white women can't steal, and that is the bare minimum of brown representation in media, specifically brown women. Um, and... Um, also, <laughs> being dark enough to pretend to be black in order to get into med school, which her brother did, by the way. This is real. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. In fact, he wrote a book about it titled Almost Black, the true story of how I got into medical school by pretending to be black by Vijay Jojo Chokalingam. And Jojo is apparently the name he used when he race swapped. Not everything went as planned. During a med school interview, an African-American doctor angrily confronted me for not being black. Cops harassed me. Store clerks accused me of shoplifting. Women were either scared of me or found my balls black dude look sexually mesmerizing. Wow, this is amazing. First of all, first of all, they were definitely scared of you. You look like you touch kids. And second, did he really compare a black doctor confronting him for not being black to cops harassing him and store clerks accusing him of stealing? <laughs> Vijay, um, one is people being racist because they think you're black. You're not. And the other is you being racist for pretending to be black. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? God, this would have killed as a movie in the era of white chicks. This is something edgy humor people would look back on and think wouldn't be able to work because everyone nowadays gets too offended. That's sick. That's so dope. I, I wonder if these enlightening experience helped him understand why affirmative action is so important. Why Trump will end affirmative action like Lincoln ended... All right, never, never mind. We're, we're going to move on. Also, just to clarify, Mindy uh, completely denounced any of her brother's work, which is good, but just the fact that they grew up in the same house kind of um, gives us a sliver of information as to why all of her Indian characters that she's either portrayed or written don't like being Indian. That's where the internalized racism comes in. That mixed with growing up with and being consumed by European beauty standards results in the Mindy Kaling problem. But before we get into that, we have to circle back to what Mindy has done right. Um, otherwise, my mom's gonna get mad at me. She loves Mindy Kaling. First of all, again, brown representation. Mindy was originally a diversity hire for the office, which just has to suck. Not knowing if you were hired because your skills were adequate enough for the job or if just it was because you're a brown woman can really lower your self-esteem. This is something that all women, both white and non-white, have to face in the workplace. So to see what Mindy has been able to achieve since then has been really impressive. And regardless, being an Indian American actress in one of the biggest American sitcoms of all time is a big deal. Keep in mind, she was part of a writing staff made up of eight people um, where she was the only woman and I assume one of very few people of color as well. 
That sounds like a living hell. And, well, it kind of was. The office was up for an Emmy n n nomination and Mindy's name was cut from the list. She didn't even make it at first. And she wrote 26 episodes. Her friends and the rest of the cast ended up helping her out, but facing oppression like that in the workplace is never easy and deserves its credit. With the release of Velma, there's been a lot of unnecessary hate regarding race swapping, which we'll get more into. And there's been a lot of racial and misogynistic remarks towards her capabilities. Okay, maybe the show isn't great, but it's not because Mindy's a brown woman. So while Mindy has faced a litany of oppression, she's been able to and is still overcoming it, and that is a feat on its own. Anyway, after The Office and skipping a few things so we don't go on any unnecessary tangents, we land on her TV show, The Mindy Project. This show completely diverts the typical South Asian stereotypes. Mindy plays a gynecologist named Mindy. Maybe she was just projecting her parents' failed aspirations for her. Hey, I'm not one to judge. But while this character is a doctor, she's eccentric, not only in her personality, but also in the way she dresses. She's funny, she's a klutz, she's horny. She's a South Asian woman lead in America in the year 2012. What the fuck is going on? This was a big step for the South Asian community and still is. Her show ended in 2017 and three years later, Mindy co-created and co-wrote the n n Netflix show, Never Have I Ever. And one year later, she created and co-wrote The Sex Lives of College Girls. Now I'm not gonna go too in depth into these shows, but Mindy continues the trend of re representation through Indian American woman leads. And overall, Mindy is a great comedian and writer. She does a really good job of relating to young Indian Americans. But, um. She kind of does it a lot in in the same way. All of her characters seem to be very similar. Her characters almost always have a love-hate relationship with their own culture and always date white guys, which bleeds into Velma. There's more we'll get to later. I just have to mention main points in this video in a thesis format because the school system has brainwashed me into thinking there's no other way to write something. She just kind of uh, gives a hint of that Mindy personality to all of her characters. It's it's kind of like how The Rock plays himself in, in every movie he's in. Except Mindy doesn't think she's the best actor to ever touch a screen. You're not. I really hate to break it to you, Dwayne. You're like the protagonist who is just really cool and charismatic, but isn't given any character development because of how fucking perfect they are, except it's just you in real life all the time. What, what, what do you do besides work out? Because acting doesn't count. You just use it as an excuse to watch yourself shirtless on a giant TV screen. And, and why the fuck are you in so many jungles, dude? What? 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 what, what why? What, 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 what are you doing? <sighs> Sorry. Um, unnecessary tangent. Where was I? Oh, right. I'm done with the good stuff now. Sorry, Mom. So, boom. We are now at the precipice, the crux of the Mindy Kaling problem. She dates too many white guys. Honestly, that's what it is. White men always win, goddammit, and it's, it's not fair, okay? And this goes for whatever you identify as, but... People of color have to be so much more attractive just to be deemed as the same level of attraction as white people. I don't like using a r r r rating system because I don't like to judge people based on how they look, but I'm going to for this example. If you have a brown man that's a five and a white man that's a five, five times out of five, the white man's gonna be picked. You guys remember Avanish, uh, right? Um, yeah, he, he's a culprit of these European beauty standards. He, he thinks Indian people are ugly. He's Indian. Well, yes, this is an extreme. M M Mindy Kaling pushes these standards over and over and, and over again. Sure, it's cool if she does it once or twice because people do go through this. Hell, I've gone through this, but this has been a repeating issue with time. I mean, just look at the history of media in the US. White people have always been at the forefront and now that companies have started to diversify their films, albeit because they wanna make more money through diversity, not because they actually care. People are losing their hair because the little mermaid's black. Mermaids aren't real. You can shut the fuck up. It just goes to show that Mindy has internalized these beauty standards. Sure, it's very likely that these standards were caused by brown men who have internalized their own beauty standards. She even said in an interview that only white men have hit on me. But when you create multiple projects and, and TV shows and characters based on your life and your experiences alone, it, it pushes representation into a box and just comes full circle back to what we're trying to avoid in the first place. Stereotypes. By dating a bunch of white men and surrounding yourself by white people, not only do you close yourself off from more representation, but you idolize and make yourself a part of these white people. Kaling declared that the fictional Mindy Lahiri has a white male level of privilege and that she isn't subjugated the way other characters of color on television are. So you, comparing yourself to white men and putting yourself above other colored people, furthers the white patriarchy and portrays that white men are, are top tier, pushing the European beauty standard harmfully onto POC, onto people of color. Sorry, it's written as POC. I wanna say people of color 
That's what I meant. Okay, guys, we're not we're not just POC. We're 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 people of color. It puts a damper on the audience's visual of what POC success can look like and limits it to basically saying that you have to act like white people or like them in order to get into these positions or to succeed in life. And when you do succeed in life, you get to be one of the white people. Yay! Let's do one of those slow motion freeze frames. I'm a white person. Yeah. Please freeze frame that in post. That's going to be so awkward if I don't do that. It starts out as a preference and ends up being the patriarchy and European beauty standards putting you in a box. And it isn't a nice box either. This box smells like curry. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry, I'm like using this chair. I'm, I'm still I'm still having to adjust to the format of like reading off of a script. So I'm like finding cool things to play with while I do it. Oh, but you thought it couldn't get any worse? Well, you're wrong. So, Mindy Kaling also has the bad habit, most likely due to personal experiences, of pushing cultural insecurities onto her brown characters and forcing them to change in order to be respected. Her most recent project and the woke dumpster fire, Velma, is a culprit of this. Again, it's it's okay to tell the story once or twice, but repeating this just creates and reinforces new stereotypes. It shows that Mindy hasn't really grown with her audience and explains why she's getting more hate now than ever. And I don't care for Velma too much. It really just seems like Mindy and um, Charlie Grandy were just trying to diversify Scooby-Doo but failed because you actually need to write a good show for it to be good. You can't just make Velma Indian and make Shaggy Black and call it a day. They aren't even remotely the same characters. Why even make it a Scooby-Doo show? Just make a, a, a new show, maybe? Also, making Shaggy Black just feels racist to me. Hmm. A character that is a stoner and constantly has the munchies. Let's let's make him black. What? We should be reimagining characters in a way that, that doesn't uphold stereotypes and in turn white supremacy. Making the Little Mermaid black? Dope. Making a pothead named Shaggy black when coincidentally there is a singer named Shaggy and Jamaicans are stereotyped as being potheads? It's a little bit too woke for me. There's also just like a lot of corporate liberal humor where, where you can tell they're trying to fit in with a younger and more modern audience, but their jokes fall flat because again, let's be honest, they're only being diverse and woke for the attention, not because they actually care. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making fun of adults who like cartoons because, well, they're a cartoon with an adult rating. You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah, it's code for adults who still watch cartoons. Yeah, that reminds me. Um, why are we letting Nepotism Baby co-write a diverse take on Scooby-Doo? What ideas does the son of a Republican congressman have to offer? This, this isn't a good look, Mindy. There's a clip of Velma shitting on Indian sweets, which is just fucking weird. You're not Velma, not while I'm lying. I can't get banned for your thoughts on South Asian desserts again. <sighs> I know, it's okay. Like the dessert course at an Indian restaurant. Just forget it. But it's even worse when I can't tell if Mindy wrote that or Charlie Grandy. God, that name feels so expensive in my mouth. It feels like I'm not able to like afford to be able to, to, to say that name. But this is the type of insecurity projecting and internalized racism I'm referring to. First of all, you're wrong. I genuinely don't think there is one bad Indian sweet. Actually, you know what? This is, this is, this is, this is for you, Mindy. Like, what were you trying to achieve? The majority of your audience is Indian, so more likely than not, they're going to like their own desserts. Do you really not know that many Indian people? Because clearly you haven't been conf confronted by someone that disagrees with your dessert politics. Well, I do. I'm socially and economically pro-Indian desserts, so take your anti-culture conservatism and go away. And on top of that, just her digs at typical brown women's t t stereotypes and then having the character development just be that character changing their identity completely just to fit in is weird. Like, yes, you yourself are not a stereotypical brown woman, but that doesn't mean all of your characters have to cope with their cultural issues in the same way that you did. It's derivative and it's boring. And also it feels like I know everything about you now because you put all of your insecurities into all your characters. And when I say all of your characters, I mean the characters that Mindy is playing or the main Indian protagonist of whatever show she is writing. There there are some exceptions like never have I ever changing those expectations slightly, but there aren't enough examples to fully break the repetitiveness. It just sucks because we've seen this pretty often with 
Brown comics. Even with Lily Singh, just using self-deprecating humor towards her own culture and making fun of it just doesn't do any good. And it, it opens doors for other people to make fun of our culture in, in the same way. It, it also really sucks in Mindy's case because even in Velma, her character goes through a lot of interesting things like mental health and sexuality. But this new story that Mindy's trying to tell is being overshadowed by her own cultural insecurities projected onto Velma. Man, if, if only we had more Indian representation behind the camera that showed more nuanced perspective into our culture rather than just the same thing over and over again. Oh, wait. You're not looking hard enough. And I'm not only talking to you during my fourth wall break, I'm also talking to myself in the monitor because I've done this too. There is more Indian representation, but they are a lot harder to find because there is less. So if you don't seek it, then these artists will never get the chance to grow and have a bigger spotlight. We have to put in the work to support smaller creatives because there is a lot of good art and that goes for any minority. I would like to give a shout out to Riddhi. She has a TikTok account where she reviews movies and she does a great job discussing South Asian representation in film. She has a video where she talks about a variety of South Asian creatives and it helped me find some that I, I didn't know about so please if you're interested I will leave the video linked in the description god out of out of every video I've done Mindy Kaling's brother pretending to be black is probably the most wild thing I, I've ever heard H how the fuck do you turn the conservative transracial argument into a, a real thing anyway um, I'm gonna wrap it up here if you guys enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe um, check out my patreon I do a mini monthly podcast now for tier 2 and tier 3 patrons and I will see you guys next time where I pretend to be white and relive my public school experience so that I don't have to try to fit in and be white. I'll already be white. <laughs> God, I regret so many things. Patreon time. Thank you to my single tier three patron, Mark. I love you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, tier two patrons, Sophia Vanella, Savsi, Samir Truesdell, Matthew MacLeod, Lucas Soda, Casey, John Grubb, Elka, Big Guy Mel, Annabelle Rose, and Alex the Tired Queer. Thank you, Tier 3 patrons, uh, Lysander, L L Lucy Goosey, Jack, Edgar Rangel, uh, Bumblebee, and Adeline Grubb. I appreciate all you guys so much um, for supporting the channel. Really, really appreciate it. Um, for those of you that are not aware, there have been some big changes to the Patreon. Um, well, not big, just some just some changes, but it, it is uh, listed as a post on Patreon. So make sure to go check that out if you haven't already. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.